All right, today I wanna to talk about agents and specifically I wanna talk about using Pydentic AI to build agents and integrate them with a Django application. So I've been working with Pydentic AI for the past couple of weeks, adding agentic features to my SAS boilerplate, SAS Pegasus. And overall, I'm really impressed with the framework. I've used Langchain and a few other agentic AI frameworks and Pydentic AI is definitely the one that I like working with the best. And so today I'm just gonna show a few examples of some of the stuff that I've done with Pydentic AI and explain a bit about how it works. And we can learn about Pydentic AI and see some of its useful features. Okay, so to start, I'm just going to sort of like demo a normal chat. So this is like a typical chatbot interaction that doesn't have any agent stuff built in. So we can say sort of like, hello, um, and we can just sort of talk to it, you know. Um, these bots are good at things like, you know, saying like, write me a poem. But these bots aren't connected to any sort of like sources of information. They're just generic chat bots. And if you're building them in your apps, they're not even gonna have sort of the built-in stuff that ChatGPT has. So for example, if I'm like, you know, what time is it? Um, or, you know, what's the weather? Like the bot's just gonna kind of like throw its hands in the air and say, you know, I, I can't do any of those things. So agents, kind of solve this problem by giving bots additional tools that they can call to do things like look up the time or look up the weather, or in this case, I'll show you sort of like do stuff specific to your app. And Pydentic AI provides a lot of nice tooling to make this pretty easy to use. So the first thing I'm gonna show is just how Pydentic AI lets you give additional context to your agents. So to do that, we're first gonna use a feature of Pydentic AI called dependencies, which allow you to give sort of like runtime context to your agents. And so in this case, from the docs, they define this dependency class that includes an API key and an HTTP client. So if you wanted to build a tool that can make HTTP requests and needs an API key, then you would pass those dependencies to the bot. And then when the bot calls a tool, it'll have access to those things. So in a SaaS application context, the most useful dependency is the logged in user. And so I'm gonna start by showing how you can do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just going to define this like user dependencies class. And this is just a way for Pydantic to know the shape of the dependencies we're passing in. So in this case, we're just passing in a user, which is going to be our Django custom user model. And so all we have to do with this class is like when we initialize the agent, which I am doing sort of down here, we pass in the user and then we create that user dependencies uh, object and we pass it into agent.run. And this code is doing a few other things related to message history that I'm not really going to talk about, but the important part is just creating these steps here and passing them to the agent. And once you've done that, then you can write tools or um, instructions that access those dependencies and use them. And the simplest way to do this is with instructions. And so instructions are basically just little things that get added to the system prompt in Pydantic AI. And so in this case, we can define these functions. In this case, we're gonna add the user's name, uh, the user's email, and this one doesn't even need those dependencies, but the current date time. And then we can kind of collect those as a set of default instructions that we wanna add to our prompts. And then when we initialize the agent, we pass those default instructions. And so I'm just going to start another new chat here with that updated code. And now I can say like, you know, hello. And you can see now the agent knows my name and it knows my name because that code up here, the user's name is, uh, and then the logged in user's display name has now been passed to the agent. And so like, you know, the agent also knows, you know, what time is it. Okay, so that is dependencies and instructions. And even these can be pretty powerful. You know, you can imagine if you were building a, uh, a debugging tool for your application and you had all this different context about the data models and, and screens that the user was viewing, you might wanna pass that into the agent and then the bot could give specific instructions based on the context of what the user is seeing on the screen. So there's a lot you can do with just these two things. Um, but the really fun part of working with agents starts to come in when you can actually use tools. So let's look at a few tool use cases and see how those work. So the first tool I wanna look at is a weather tool. And 
All of the tools you define in Pydantic AI are basically just Python functions that uh, work with Pydantic models. So if you're not familiar with Pydantic, it's basically, it's kind of like data classes, but with type annotations that help you uh, do validation and serialization and things like that. And you basically define these functions. And so in this case, this is a function that will get the latitude and longitude of a location uh, based on its description. And Pydantic AI will actually use these doc strings in order to sort of understand um, how to work with this tool. And in this case, you can see I'm, I'm basically just calling this um, OpenStreetMap API with the location description, which will return a uh, API response and then pulling out the latitude and longitude out of that. And that is useful when combined with this getWeather function. And again, you can see this will take in uh, a latitude and a longitude and return a dictionary of sort of weather info. If we wanted to be more um, precise, we could return a pedantic model that had you know the exact set of weather info that we're expecting, um, but this should be fine. And again, we're just gonna now sort of like hit this open weather API with the latitude and longitude and return back the JSON data that we get. And so now in Pydantic AI, you can take these functions and you can define a function tool set, which is essentially a set of tools that you can provide to the AI. And then you can pass that tool set into the agent itself and it will be able to use those tools. So let me show you what that looks like. So now in this uh, get default agent class, which is where this is getting called, I'm just gonna pass in that weather tool set as well. And I've got this other code here. This is in, in my production application, these, you know, you can kind of switch between agents on the fly. For now, I'm just gonna use this get default agent for everything and I'll, I'll, I'll be updating this with um, adding different examples. And so now that we put that weather tool in, we can start a new chat and we can say like, hey, what's the weather? And Pydantic AI is actually smart enough to know that it needs to find out the location where I want the weather. And so it'll ask me, so I'll tell it where I am, which is Cape Town. And now you can see that it is telling me the exact weather um, and it is quite windy outside today. So I think that's pretty accurate. And under the hood, I can show you, um, we can see that, you know, it called this get lat long tool with location description Cape Town, which it kind of magically pulls out of my message. And then it calls the get weather with the results. And then it gets back this API response, which it converts into a human readable response and sends back to me. Um, and Pydantic AI is handling all that sort of routing and serialization and all of that logic for you, which is really nice. So you can basically just write the tools and stitch them together and it will do all of that stuff for you. So that is pretty cool. Of course, having a chatbot tell you the weather isn't exactly the most novel use case. What's probably more interesting is um, working in your own database. So let's look at a tool that does that and allows you to sort of agentically edit your data models. So in Pegasus, there is this like employee example that ships with the application that just sort of shows you how to do CRUD stuff. And it has a very simple data model with a name, a department, and a salary. And you can kind of work with these employees. And it just shows you a bunch of different ways to do that. And let's look at how we can agentically modify these. So I'm going to go to this employees file. And the first thing we'll do is we'll define sort of a pedantic model to represent this. And this is basically just like, you know, a serialized representation of the Django model. You can look at the Django model. It sort of has the same stuff on it. So there's a user, there's a name, a department, and a salary. And, and here we have, you know, an idea, a name, a department, and a salary. Kind of the same stuff. Again, if we wanted to be fancier, we could turn this department into an enum. Um, we could put the user information on here as well, but for the simple demo, we don't really need any of that. And then we are defining more tools. And so again, we're gonna define these different tools. They're gonna take in, importantly, our run context, remember, with our user. And in this case, we're gonna list the employees and here, 
we're going to make sure that we filter those employees that are coming back based on the logged in user. And then we're going to return the Fidantic representations of those employees. And then we write similar sort of helper utility functions to create employees. Again, making sure we set the user properly. Update, oops, what happened there? Update employees and delete employees. And then we create a tool set with, with these four functions here. And by adding that tool set to our agent class, um, we should now be able to work with employees. And so I'm going to open up, let's see, I'm going to go back in another tab so I can go back to the chat. And now I'm going to say, you know, can you tell me the names of all my employees? And it will correctly tell me that based on this data. And so just for kicks, I'll show you. So I have actually um, integrated that chat into this employee view. And so we can actually sort of like watch in real time as we edit these things. So we could say like, can you add an employee and then give the details? And so you can see it uh, parsed out the details we wanted, and then it went ahead and created this. And now you can use natural language to work with these things. So, you know, we can make some other suggestions like uh, let's give Lockwood arrays. So you can see his salary bumped up there. Or, you know, we could say like fire Dylan. Bye bye, Dylan. Um, so yeah, so this is like again, you know, it's it's really not a lot of code to build a um, natural language interface into your application, which is pretty cool. The last thing I will talk about is MCP, and so Pydentic AI also has sort of like built-in MCP tool use, which is pretty neat. And so I'll show an example of how you can use that. And so in this case, I'm going to run the MCP Alchemy MCP server. If you aren't familiar with MCP, I have another video about it. But essentially, it's a protocol that AIs use to um, expose themselves as tools and then be run as tools. And in this case, MCP Alchemy is a library that lets you interact with a SQL database. And I'm just giving it the arguments, uh, including my database URL, to directly access my database. So it's quite dangerous to give raw database access to an agent. MCP Alchemy does, I think, require you to be like read-only, so it doesn't. It, it will never sort of like update or insert in your database. But you still don't want to um, expose this to any users. And so in this case, we are adding this like tool requires super user call, which again will check those dependencies that we're passing in, and it will confirm that there is a user and that the user is a super user and the user is on staff, and therefore, um, and will only allow them to call this tool if the user is a super user, otherwise they'll get sort of this permission denied exception. So now we can, you know, replace that employee thing with our admin database access. And now we can start asking it questions about what we want to find out in the database. So like how many users, for example. And so yeah, we can look at the logs to see what it did. Um, it looks like first it tried to count the users from a users table, um, but it got a error because that's not the name of the table. And then it decided to um, list all the table names using the same tool, got back all the table names, and then acquired the right table and returned the amount of users that are signed up. Um, so 
Yeah, so you can use these tools to basically instantly drop in like an admin chat into your application so that, you know, like data analysts can go ask questions about what's going on in the data and do business stuff with it. All right, I hope that was a useful overview of Pydantic AI and agentic tooling in Django applications. If you have any questions or feedback, leave it out in the comments. If you want to try out any of this stuff, you can check out SAS Pegasus. Uh, all of the stuff I just demoed is available in there as of today.